<laughs> you have to project. Uh, we are live. I think we should be live. And the URL may have changed. You might have to republish it again. Because I, I start one session already. So he is. <laughs> yeah, we're live. We're live. Same one, is it? No, red one or wrong one. Yeah. Yeah, we're live. We're live. Oops, now we're going to have a feedback loop. Hello to those watching online. All two of you. There's one watching, that must be me. <laughs> <laughs> the other one is Joanne. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it's actually pretty good. So. <laughs> All right, we're going to start soon, guys. So, if you can't hear us, you might want to move a little bit closer. And Chariot's going to sing for us. <laughs> I feel like Chariot needs some, like a backup choir, some backup singers. Sing, sing with me, please. Uh, maybe I'll have to stand closer, eh, so they can hear them on the camera. Hello. Just don't me sing. <laughs> I can clip it. <laughs> define, <laughs> define sing. Can music come out of my mouth? Yes. Sound can. Does it sound good? Definitely not. I know I'm live. I'm giving, I'm giving the people that are watching online. Hello, all two of you. David and me. So, yeah, but we're going to trim that. We're going to trim that once we start. Okay. Do you want me to stand up here with you? I feel like I should for the camera, for the microphone. Why don't some of you come up and join the the shade? Can we get a couple of singers? Come on, guys. Come on, guys. Yeah. Since I didn't really prepare anything today, um, if you have any song requests, we're more than welcome to take some. Okay, song requests. Okay. 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 Laid him down. The entrance sealed. All 
Alright, I can't hear you guys, I praise the name. Son of heaven. I trample death. shall return. The blazing sun. And I will rise. My gaze transfixed. Good job team, I'm quite enjoying being a worship leader, giving you the next line. Uh, can we get another song request? Something everyone might know? What was that one? Goodness of God, I like that one. You know that one? I'll find the lyrics. For your mercy never fails. From the moment that I wake up, led me through the fire in the darkest night I've known you as a father
goodness is running after. All my life. Good stuff. All right. We can do one more, I reckon. Should we do one more? All right, we need another song request. Don't be shy. What's one of the upper room favorites? Okay, mighty to save. Everyone needs compassion. Everyone needs forgiveness. Right, Saviour, he can move the mountains. Take me as you find me. Give my life to follow.
Nicholson. Let's give Chariot a round of applause. Good effort. Was there anything else planned or am I just, I'm just talking now, I think. All right, thanks, mate. Cool. Uh, maybe we'll call you back up afterwards for another one. Before I get started uh, sharing, welcome to uh, anyone that's joining us online. We're at the beach today. And uh, <laughs> I'm sure there's, there's at least one person, David, watching us online. So hello, David, you're right there. Let's just, uh, let's get the young people to give a round of applause to those who have catered for us today with lunch because they've done an awesome job. So thank you so much for taking the time and effort, not just to drive all this way to have church with us, uh, but to bring food with you. And it's been awesome. I know I've enjoyed it. I've had too much to eat and there's still leftovers. Uh, so that's a good, that's a good time. So uh, I just want to do something kind of simple today. Uh, hopefully I don't talk for too long. It's a little bit hot out here. Uh, hopefully everyone can hear me okay. If you can't hear me, try and move closer, I suppose. Um, do you remember the time, do you remember the countdown to 2021? You know how 2020 was a rough year, right? COVID was bad. Do you remember how everyone was just so keen for 2021 to come? As if like the new year would bring some sort of a change, as if COVID wouldn't exist in the new year. Like 2020 was so bad, like 2021 had to be better, like it was going to be better. But then as we got towards the countdown for 2021, I remember starting to see uh, memes come up. Uh, that, and these memes were, were pretty funny. It's like it got to um, 11.59 uh, at night in 2020, and then it just, the clock ticked over, and, and the days kept on counting, the hour kept on going, and the end of 2020, 2020 never ended. Or the date changed over, but instead of turning to January 1st, it became uh, December 32nd, December 33rd as if 2020 would never uh, end and this struggle with COVID would just carry on. And as funny as those memes were, uh, the sad bit is they were kind of right. Like 20, that New Year's period was pretty stressful. The border was closing. I had plenty of friends who would drove back across the border over New Year's uh, to try and make it back. That's how bad it was at the time. And we all thought 2021 would be better, but it wasn't. It was just as bad, if not worse, Lockdowns continued for us. It was hard. It was tough. It was rough. The last couple of years have been really challenging. And I don't know about you guys, but uh, for me, it's been a time of reflection. It's been a time of saying, what's important to me in my life? Uh, what do I want to be doing? And I, I've noticed as I talk to people and as I go around and I meet with people and I have conversations that I'm not the only one who has been having uh, those questions. There's been a, a joke going around with the return to work in person calling this time the great resignation where people are resigning from their jobs and moving and saying i'm going to go work elsewhere or do something else i'm one of those people who said after two years of chaplaincy online i can't do chaplaincy anymore i need to change i need to do something new reevaluate my life and go back into a church new community move across town uh, and so a lot of people have been wrestling with those changes and one of those questions that also comes is, well, who do we want to be? What's our priorities? What's important to us? I remember sitting down with my barber, um, and I don't have him anymore. He was on the west side, uh, but a great guy, and we were chatting. He's from Indonesia, and he was telling me about just how difficult it was the last two years had been uh, without, well, the last year had been at the time, uh, without seeing his family, without having the opportunity to return home to Indonesia to connect with his family uh, and it's the same for me without having that opportunity to fly home to New Zealand and believe me I wasn't planning I only plan to go back once per year but as soon as that border closes that challenge that wrestle of well I want to be over there and I can't and do I pick up and move do I go home and he was sharing that but in order for him to leave and go back to Indonesia he wouldn't be able to get back into Australia at all and he's got a, a partner here he's studying here he's got a life here and so he was wrestling with that battle well do i want to go and live that life or do i want to live this life and that's sort of what uh, the period has been like for a lot of people between uh you know during this journey of COVID and this wrestle of of lockdowns and re-evaluations and so i sat down and i 
also reevaluated. well, what type of person do I want to be? What type of character do I want to have? And I looked at some characters in the Bible and uh, I really wrestled with them because there's some key people and we're talking uh, this weekend um, with the youth, we're talking about Joshua and going through a few of the stories of Joshua's life. And Joshua is one who, who, he came up against some difficult situations. Uh, he was leading the Israelites into a completely new area without, uh, he was now in charge. Uh, but he stayed faithful to God and was an incredible leader, a great commander of, of, of the Israelites and a great leader. And I wonder, how, how does he do that? How does he maintain his faith and his relationship with God, even though he's going through such a difficult time? But there are some other people. Joseph. And if you know the story of Joseph, you know that his own brothers sold him as a slave. And it gets worse. You think it can't get worse than that, you're a slave. Well, he gets thrown into prison for something he didn't even do. And he says this, he says, What you intended to harm me, God intended for good. What you intended to harm me, God intended for good. And I look at Joseph's life and I go, how do you have that kind of faith? That faith in God that even through the difficult, of, the, the most trying of times, you can say, what they intended to harm me, God intended for good. And then I think of people like King David. And yeah, if you've read the, the story of King David, you know, it's, it, he came up against some great foes, Goliath, the giant. Uh, Saul tried to kill him on so many occasions. But you know, if you read the story of David, it gets actually, his life gets so much worse than just that. His own family life and his battle with his, with his sons, and with Absalom. And I think to myself, how do you maintain a faith? David was called a man after God's own heart. And he made mistakes. He didn't, have an, he, he didn't do everything right. But how did he maintain his walk with God and have that connection to God? And he writes these beautiful psalms. Beautiful psalms. But life was not easy for him. And then I look at the stories of Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. The, the three friends in the fiery furnace who said, no matter what, no matter what you do to us, we're not going to bow down to your idols. We have a God who's greater than that. And they ended up in the fiery furnace. And, and we know now that they survived and that God was with them in the furnace, directly with them in that battle. But how do you maintain that faith in that difficult of a time? And this is what they say. If we are thrown into the blazing furnace, the God we serve is able to deliver us. That's faith. But then they keep on going. He will deliver us from your majesty's hand. But even if he does not, we want you to know, your majesty, that we will not serve your gods or worship the image of gold you have set up. So Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, their faith was so great that they say, even if we end up being burnt alive, so be it. Even if God doesn't save us, we're still not going to do what you want to do. That's faith. How do you have that kind of faith? And then I get to the, the New Testament and to Paul. And I love Paul's writings in the New Testament. He's written most of it. But I, I wrestle with them so much. Paul was a guy who was beaten. And there's passages where you can see just how uh, crippled his life became because of the beatings he received. And he'd end up in jail and prison. He was almost stoned to death at one stage. And he writes this, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all. The Lord is near. I read these stories and I say, where do they find their peace? Where do they find their hope? How is it that they are able to have such great faith in such difficult times? So I want to leave that thought with you uh, this afternoon. I want you to get, uh, share with the person next to you. When you, think about, when you think about people in Scripture, when you think about these Bible stories, why is it that they were able to have such incredible faith even in the most difficult of times? So spend some time reflecting and sharing that with the person next to you and then I'll get up and I'll say a little bit more.
Anybody want to share what you discussed? Tough crowd today, eh? It's the heat. It's the heat. Well, let me share, I'll share with you what I think it is. Um, researchers have found that our mindset, the things that we think about, impact our emotions. They impact the way we feel. And if you can have a positive mindset in life, if you can think positively, if you can focus on good things, uplifting words, if you can encourage other people or encourage yourself, that it can actually make a difference in your emotional well-being. It can make a difference in how you feel. And I think that that's probably what went through the minds of these people, that they had to keep that positive mindset, keep their eyes fixed on something greater than themselves, focused on God, and, uh, and fix their mind on that positivity and knowing that God will be, God will be there with them and that that was able to help them get through the good times, the bad times. Dr. Darren Morton, I don't know if you've heard of him. Uh, he's a smart guy. He says, At least a third of your thought flow each day is undirected. At least a third of the, the things that you think each day is undirected. Which means if you don't take care, lead it to a positive place, we can unwittingly find ourselves in a negative one. So a third of the thoughts that you think each day go all sorts of different directions, undirected. You haven't focused on something. And if you're not intentional to focus on something positive, your mind will, will end up wandering and potentially wander into the negative. And when you think negatively, you feel negatively as well. It's interesting stuff. Max Licardo writes this, The good life begins not when circumstances change, but when then does. The good life begins not when circumstances change, but when our attitude towards them does. So when we say, these circumstances suck, but I'm not going to let it down. I'm going to change my attitude. I'm going to be more positive. That's what research is showing, that if you can change the way you think, if you can focus positively, think positively, you can have a huge impact on your life and your well-being, your emotional uh, well-being. And the thing I find interesting about this is that it's actually also very biblical. So research shows that today. But way back in the Bible, Paul writes this. Paul, the same person who is able to sing when he's in jail and is able to say, rejoice in the Lord always, I'll say it again, rejoice. He says this. Finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, Whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice and the God of peace will be with you. So Paul says, if you want to have peace, if you want the God of peace to be with you, then fix your minds on things that are admirable, that are praiseworthy, that are positive that are noble. Think about positive things. Think about things that you're thankful for. And then the peace of God will be with you. He says that in the same passage where he promises that God is able to provide a peace that passes all understanding. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, with prayer and petition, present your request to God with thanksgiving and the peace of God will guard your hearts. A beautiful promise, but it requires us to change our mindset. It requires us to say, yeah, the last couple of years have been rough. The last couple of years are hard. And maybe life right now is not where I want it to be right now, but I'm gonna look for the positives. I'm gonna look for the silver lining. I'm gonna look for the things that I'm thankful for. I'm gonna focus on those things. And when I do that, the peace of God will be with me. And I would suggest that one of the greatest things that you could ever fix your mind on and focus your mind on is Jesus and how thankful we can be for him. So I want to give you a chance to, uh, just as we wrap up now, to share again with the person next to you, what is one thing that you are thankful for above all else today? What is one thing that you are thankful for that you can fix your mind on?
share with the person beside you. We do. I love you, Lord. We're gonna we're gonna do a song. Um, Caitlin's gonna lead it for us. We're gonna do it without guitar. Uh, Caitlin, apparently you know it, so too bad. It's called "I Love You, Lord." It's about a song request. All right, I'm gonna lead you. Apparently, you're gonna regret this. Oh, we've started. Take joy, my king.
Oh, beautiful. Well, I hope that uh, you guys can find something to be thankful for, something positive to focus your mind on, uh, and to... Today I'm thankful for this community and the chance to, to be here together. Uh, let me pray for you guys if we can bow our heads. Heavenly Father, uh, I'm so thankful for this church uh, and for the chance to be here in nature today, worshipping you and spending time with each other. I pray for your blessing over each person here. Lord, may we be able to fix our minds on things above, to focus on you, to focus on good things and positive things that will uplift our minds, Lord. And may we be able to have faith even in the most difficult and trying of times. In Jesus' precious name, amen. Well, thank you for joining us online, everybody. And uh, sorry if you couldn't hear the, uh, the singing, but uh, it's good to have you here, or two of you. Happy Sabbath. Okay. Is the song sound familiar once you've sung it? Yeah. Okay.